Welcome to the Selling Made Human podcast, where we show you how to sell without selling. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to reveal the hidden, invisible leads in your market and turn them into prospects and customers, while all of your competition is busy fighting over the visible leads in your market, established market demand. So in today's episode, we are going to make the invisible visible and we are going to create new market demand. If you've already watched a few episodes of Selling Made Human, you will know that selling is all about connecting with real people. And likely your business is experiencing the connection gap. There is a gap between you and your potential customers. Maybe you don't know how to reach them, where to reach them, Maybe you don't know what to say to those customers, those potential customers. Or maybe you're using saturated marketing formats like funnels, landing pages, and webinars, and people are just tuning out to your marketing. Or maybe you're actually busy fighting with your competitors over the visible leads, the people that already know they have a problem, the people who have already normed around the solution to solving that problem and are now just shopping around based on price, shopping around your different competitors, and you are in the market competing for that same business. So likely, these are some of the symptoms that are keeping you stuck, that are preventing you from growing your business. So if you want to up-level your marketing strategy, if you want to do some deep work on your marketing strategy that really feels good, that feels educational, that involves shifting beliefs, you're really going to love this episode. We're going to go quite deep and we're going to talk about how you can unmask and reveal the invisible leads in your market and create new demand that just hasn't existed before on the market. And this is great because you're not going to compete with everyone else that is fighting over the established demands and the leads and prospects that are already that are already visible. Okay, so I've talked a little bit about the saturated marketing formats that are out there. I've talked about, you know, fighting with uh, com- competitors over the visible prospects. So I want to just take a step back for a second and I want to explain the two types of prospects that are in any market. So we have the visible prospects and leads and we have the invisible prospects and leads. So I do want to unpack this before we move on and we talk about how to make the invisible visible. I want to I want to define really what, you know, what is an invisible lead and what is a visible lead. So the easier ones to sell to are the visible leads and prospects. This is these are the the low hanging fruit. The low hanging fruit is what everyone is going after. These are the leads and prospects that your customers, that sorry, rather your competitors are selling directly into and likely these are the same pool or pocket of people that you are also trying to sell to and that's maybe why you're feeling frustrated that you can't convert customers that you're not growing at a sustainable rate. Or maybe one of the symptoms as well is that prospects don't see you as different. Okay. They might see, um, they might recognize you as a company, but they're not interested in doing business with you because there's someone cheaper or better in some way. And your business just doesn't really stand, doesn't really stand out. Okay. So the easier ones to sell to are the visible prospects. However, there are there is a much bigger pool of people that do want to buy what you sell, but they are they are invisible and they are hard to reach. And they're hard to reach because the problem that they have, they don't really understand their problem very well. So they're kind of somewhat problem aware, but they're not as problem aware as the visible prospects. The people that know they have a problem that have already performed research on Google on what the the available solutions are to solving that problem and are already talking to your competitors. They're already on their email lists, clicking their ads, attending their webinars, and they're in their funnel. Okay, so when you come along, you just are another business, another competitor really that can be thrown into the mix. So this much bigger pool of people that is the big opportunity that are invisible and hard to reach they're hard to reach because they haven't really matured yet. 
in their thinking. Okay, so they know they have a problem at some level, but they haven't really set out to solve that problem yet. They haven't conducted problem research. They haven't consumed content that helps them define their problem, and they haven't actually researched available solutions to this problem yet. And the people, when you think about it, the visible demand that is on the marketplace, they're a much smaller group of people who have matured in their thinking, who have become problem aware, researched their problem, understand their problem more, and are now solution aware. So they now know the available options for solving that problem, the various companies in that space, the features and benefits, the price points, all of those things. Okay. And these are people who have just matured out of the very big pool of people in general that have this problem. So trying to sell to the people who are visible and know they have the problem and know the ways of solving that problem, yes, in some ways it is easier because they're almost like ready to buy, but because they're so aware of the problem that they have and the solutions that are available, it is also the most competitive. So in a way, these people are ready to buy, but everyone is trying to sell to them, okay? So it makes the situation much, much more competitive. It is also the smaller of the two pools, okay? So the big pool is the people in general that have the problem and the, you know, the invisible prospects. And the visible prospects are the much smaller pool, as I've said, of the people who are maturing from the big pool into the small pool who are problem aware and solution aware. So how do we fix this? How do we appeal to the bigger pool? And how do we kind of go in and tap into that big pool and access it and manufacture and create and generate new demand that does not exist on the marketplace currently? How do we create demand for our offer and for our business so that those people mature and become problem aware and solution aware in a way that we actually control by controlling the dialogue and the narrative in a very ethical way, I might add. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit later um, in, in this episode. So the big opportunity is not to deal with established um, you know, demand that's on the marketplace and to deal with visible leads. The big opportunity is to deal with the invisible leads. And it is slightly more difficult at first to create marketing that accesses this pool. But once you do this effectively, then you can create a flood of leads and prospects into your business that are not looking at competitors and will become normed that your way is the only way or the best way of doing something. So when they're ready to buy, there really is only one show in town and it's your business. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about the concepts that we will cover in today's episode, including insight-based marketing, how to give your customers an aha so that you shift their beliefs and get them to think differently about your company by first getting them to think differently about themselves and their problem and the available solutions for solving that problem. I shot a whole episode on insight-based marketing and how to give your customers an aha. So I would check that out on YouTube as well, where we go super uh, deep into that. Okay, so let's tap into this bigger opportunity and create demand. So I'm going to give you a little synopsis of the AHA or Insight. I'm not going to repeat everything that I did in that episode because it was like 30 minutes just on the topic of creating an AHA or an Insight. But I do want to give you a high level overview in this episode so that you are armed with the correct information. So um, here we go. So most companies out there are really asking their potential customers to think differently about the company, okay? So a company goes out and it promotes itself with its brand and with its marketing and with its features and benefits. And the ask of that marketing, the ask of that advertising is, please remember us, please think differently about us. We want to be differentiated in the marketplace. Please remember something that is defining uh, about us. So that's what most companies do. However, most companies don't really have anything that is compelling or different uh, in terms of the, the story they tell with their marketing and advertising. Usually at its core, at its essence, companies actually do have defining characteristics that really do help them to stand out, but they're just lousy at telling a compelling story around that and their advertising and marketing is quite lazy uh, in that sense, probably because they don't know any better. 
So they end up just marketing in the same way as their competitors and they look the same, sound the same and end up being stuck in the sea of sameness or the red ocean. OK, so they they think that their marketing or advertising should be kind of similar to what their competitors do, because if it works for my competitors, well, then it should work for me, too. But unfortunately, it creates an effect of everything that just blends in together and it is the opposite of standing out. So if you want to cut through the noise, um, this is going to help your business to stand out. You will cut through the noise. Customers will see you as different and you get to tap into the pool of invisible prospects and pull them out into the world of the visible, make them problem aware, define the solution and lead them to you. All right. So we've talked about lazy marketing and advertising where Me Too companies push similar marketing claims and offers, similar features and benefits. And really what they're doing is they're kind of screaming to the market, please think differently about us. But a much more effective form of advertising is education-based marketing. Now, not the kind of education-based marketing where we just teach people a bunch of random things or stuff. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of companies are currently rehashing and photocopying information that their competitors could reasonably say as well, okay? And when we have generic content, tidbits of information that are already widely accepted by a marketplace, people consume it and they say, that's interesting. I have seen similar things to this before. So I'm going to thank them for the interesting content, but I'm going to move on. And that's what they're saying at a subconscious level. They move on and they do whatever they have to do next in their day. It's much more effective when your content is frame breaking, it causes people to act. It gives them a compelling insight. It gives them an aha moment. It helps them to see the world differently. So rather than asking prospects to think differently about us as a company, instead, through an aha moment, we shift their beliefs and get that prospect to think differently about themselves first so that eventually they think differently about our company. And I'm going to give you some examples of this. So the best way to do this is to really call out the customer's A-frame or the status quo that the customer is currently stuck in. So by, by saying, look, I know that you want to grow a business. Let's say, for example, that might be their dream outcome. So we call out their dream outcome and then we say, but you might be doing it wrong. You're probably trying social media posting, list building, webinars, saturated marketing formats, and funnels. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating an A-frame, an old way of doing things. Now, you probably don't understand the risks of following the old, appro old approach. Webinars, funnels, landing pages, social media posting, it's outdated. Everyone is doing this. You're not cutting through the noise. So now I'm giving them the implications and consequences of being stuck in their A-frame. So current, now they're saying, oh, now I need to change. Now I'm interested in actually doing something. So that's just a little example of how you can break someone's frame and shift their beliefs through content and through advertising. And this is how we actually take the invisible prospects and pull them into the world of the invisible. Because we're going to places where people typically go to learn, where people go to be entertained and, and informed. And what we do is we present advertising that is useful, advertising that is educational, but content that is not educating them into the desert. Uh, what I mean by that is content that is not random, content that is not rehashed, but content that is thematically linked and frame breaking and gives them an aha that kind of leads them down a path of thinking differently about their problem and differently about the available solutions. So now what happens is you stop prospects right in their tracks, you force them to pay attention to you, you shift their beliefs so they're starting to think differently about the world, differently about their situation, and they're saying, wow, you know, Patrick has showed me that I'm not just up to my ankle in problems or in a particular problem, but I'm actually up to my neck. I'm out in the middle of a lake and I'm drowning and I need to do something today. I need to act. Otherwise, this bad thing is going to happen or I'm going to be stuck for much longer or I didn't realize what I was doing towards achieving my goal. I didn't realize how bad it was. I didn't realize how outdated the marketing strategies were that I was following. I'm ready to change. I'm ready to try something new. So that's the kind of content that is jarring and frame breaking and gets people to 
act. So this is an amazing opportunity to market in this way so that we can take the prospects on the market who are invisible and really compel them to act to become visible. All of your competitors right now are likely marketing to the visible people in the market. They are not creating new market demand. They are not manufacturing demand. They're just happy to deal with what is called established demand. The pool of people that knew they had a problem, eventually that problem became so big and so painful that they started doing research into their problem and solutions. The problem is that they've already become normed around what the problem is the ways of solving that problem and how much it costs to solve that problem. So when you're competing in that pool, they're just going to shop around on price, think that this method based on their research is the best thing to go with and they maybe go with one of your competitors. So you can start to see now psychologically what's going on. So this pool here of the invisible is huge. It is the real market opportunity. And when you do the slightly more difficult work at the beginning, okay, to create a frame-breaking aha, to give your customers an insight and to out-teach your competitors, you can mobilize the demand that is in the invisible pocket of people. The huge opportunity here, you can mobilize that demand, you can generate and create new demand and make those prospects visible, okay? And that's how you do it. You give them an aha moment. And as I've said, there is another episode on Selling Made Human that I recorded just on A, how to get attention. And then once you have their attention, give them a belief shifting aha so that they start to think differently about themselves, differently about their problem, realize that they have to act now, not later. And what you do is you ethically force the maturation of people from the big pool into the smaller pool. They actually feed from the invisible into the visible. They become a new prospect and you've helped them to do that faster than they otherwise would, ha would have. So your content helps people to stop languishing, okay, and to actually do something that is good for them. So in that sense, it is very ethical. You're helping people to make meaningful progress in their lives. And when you bring them from the big pool into the small pool, from the invisible to the visible, this educational process is creating an all roads leading to you situation, a category of one. You become the customer's only choice. The end of this process, the big pool turning into the small pool, those people really only want to work with you because you've brought them on this journey. You've given them the ahas and you've probably given them practical tools, templates and techniques that they can use to achieve small wins on the way to a big win. And the big win is the final destination or outcome that they probably need to work with you a bit more intimately with to achieve their uh, desired success. All right. So I know that's a lot to... Um, that's a lot to bite off there in the last few minutes. And the question then begs, once you have given them an aha or insight, or once you have designed your aha or insight, how do you actually get this in front of people? Okay. So what we need to do is kind of pretend that we are a detective. Okay. So um, sit down, imagine you as a detective, and you're trying to think like those invisible prospects the people who have not Googled their problem yet, the people who are unaware of the available solutions and the competitors that are in that market. So where do those people hang out? The people who are not yet solution or problem aware, where do they hang out on the internet? What do they read? What kind of publications? What are they likely doing in their world? What are they doing in their life before they realize the need to hire someone in this space? Where are they one step ahead of getting into this problem land? Where do they typically look for information? Who, is, who already has them in an audience or a list? Who are the thought leaders in a given market that are kind of one step ahead of you or one step before you, before they realize they have a problem? So I would think about some of these questions. I would think about the language that this market use and how you are going to present this in your communication so that you can actually tap into their secret desires and enter into the conversation that the prospect is already having in their mind. Lots of people are already having a conversation in their mind about something that is not right in their life or in their business. And if you can enter into that conversation, 
You can tap into the invisible prospects with an aha, with an insight. You can compel them to act where they're like, wow, now is a good time to do this. This is frame breaking. I want to move forward. Wow, this looks like a much better way of doing things. I didn't realize I was doing things in such an old and outdated way. Let me try a few of the things that this person is talking about. Oh, wow, these things are starting to work for me. I now have belief that this is the new way and the old way is this dogma. So we use this in interface. We use this in Selling Made Human. It works phenomenally well. I've used this across several other businesses with explosively good results. I think it's something that will be amazing for you. And I'm going to give you a little insight as to how we use this inside interface. So the interface software, and I'm not going to give you a, like a pitch on interface today, but the high level is that it is an interactive video tool to help you build better relationships with your potential customers and video based quizzes and video based quiz flows have proven to be very effective when it comes to getting uh, conversions. Now, if we were to sell only to the visible leads and prospects in our market, we would have about 90% less revenue in our business, and they will be people that are comparing us to all of our competitors. So a great example of this is the Google search campaigns that we run. Okay, so we have certain keywords like quiz funnel, video quiz funnel, and those leads actually do convert very well for us. But there are only so many people that go to Google and type in quiz funnel, and there are fewer that type in video video quiz funnel. We run ads against these keywords, and we do get leads, and we get customers every week from using those keywords, but not at a very high volume, okay? Because they are the people who realize that they have a, a problem, they have done research already, and they have decided that a quiz funnel is the best way to solve that problem. And it's not a bad way to solve a problem of getting more leads and clients, but they've already made that decision. They are already looking at our competitors, okay? They already know our competitors' prices and features. So they're kind of doing a kind of a, you know, what they think is an apples to apples comparison with our software. Now, we do have some other very powerful marketing strategies that I'm going to detail in another episode that helps us to take people who are in the established demand, visible leads, and how to really show them that you are not an apples to apples comparison and how to make yourself an orange when they're, when your competitors are maybe an apple. So a very unfair comparison so that you know you can rise and shine above everyone else. But that's for a different episode. So if we were to just deal with the people who are searching for exactly what we provide, we would have 90% less revenue in our business. So instead, well, we do do this as well. But one of the big things that we do is we also run display advertising on Facebook and on YouTube. And of course, we produce organic content on YouTube, which is probably what you're seeing here today and you're watching from, from youtube.com. So with Facebook ads and with YouTube ads, what we do is we show the interface video quiz flow functionality. We show how it works. We show why it's a big opportunity. We show how it's different. We show how it addresses the issue of saturated marketing formats like webinars and landing pages and all of these things that are really kind of antiquated and are not working. And we show you why not being the face of your business is damaging and why recording yourself and putting yourself into interactive video can help you build a lot of trust and rapport and connection with your potential customers. So what happens is these ads go in front of people who never considered using a video quiz funnel software or even a quiz funnel and who have never typed anything like that into Google at all. But likely in their minds, they've been thinking about ways of improving their lead generation, of getting more clients and overall improving their marketing. So what we are doing with this advertising is we are entering into the conversation that is already happening in the prospect's mind. And what we're doing is using an aha or an insight inside the ad to reframe their beliefs, to call out the A-frame as, hey, are you still follow following saturated marketing formats? Are you still hiding behind your business instead of actually creating connection and trust and putting yourself out there? And then they realize through the advertising, which is useful, hey, I'm not up to my ankle. I'm really up to my neck. I'm out in the lake and I'm drowning. I need to try something new. This company has educated me. Maybe a video-based quiz funnel so that I can build trust and rapport 
is an amazing opportunity to build my list and create clients. I've never thought of this before, but maybe I should give it a try. So that's how we are accessing invisible leads. We're going into the invisible world, the big, big pool, and we're making them visible. And that's how we are creating most of our revenue inside Interface. And you can do exactly the same inside your business. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought of this and make sure to check out sellingmadehuman.com where I have a free course that shows you how to do exactly what I've just discussed in today's episode. We also give you not only a course, but we have a community, we have live events, and we have a weekly newsletter so that you don't miss out on great strategies like this one today. And on sellingmadehuman.com, you can also follow us on social for extra tips, strategies, and tactics. I hope this was useful. Leave a comment below on YouTube. I do read and reply to all of the comments. I hope this is useful, and I'll see you soon.